According to supply chain consultant Grant Swanepoel, South Africa compares very well with the developed world. In South Africa we found that there were a number of risks which were very, very similar to the rest of the world. So if we compare the 25 risk factors that the survey, survey identified, we, we see that those are very much aligned to the rest of the world and we actually found that 76% of the top 10 risks in South Africa were exactly the same 71% of the top risks in the rest of the world. So that just shows very close alignment to the rest of the world. However, we did find that there were some outliers if we compared the rest of the world to South Africa. And we found that those main outliers were uh, disease and infestation, which could be related to AIDS, we think. There could also be an extended loss of electricity, which was obviously a big thing in South Africa quite a while ago. Uh, there was also various other things. So protracted labor disputes, for example, was a very big risk, which, uh, which was much, much higher than the rest of the world was. So, yeah, there were some things that were a little bit worrying, but on the whole, we actually aligned quite closely with the rest of the world. A few today of what our findings were, just the main, the main focus area. Swanepoel was part of the team analyzing the findings of the MIT Global Risk Survey. The survey aimed to determine how cultural factors influence perceptions towards risk mitigation. From that, we could then take a complete picture of the world and compare different countries to each other due to the fact that supply chains are increasingly globalized and we're using suppliers from various different countries and obviously customers in different countries as well. The survey identified seven major types of disruptions. Internal operations disruptions, losing supply of raw materials, losing communication with vendors or other sites, a sudden drop in customer demand, not being able to ship or deliver products, people not being available and running out of money. Marketing Director of Imperial Logistics, Abri de Swart, maintains at the moment Africa has a lot to learn about the importance of risk management. Some of it is a bit uh, of a sort of head in the sand, typically ostrich uh, approach, um, really hoping that it's not going to happen to you. Where some companies uh, have really got very, very good uh, structures in place uh, in, in terms of you know, fire, information, obviously as a logistics service provider, information is key. So our ability to have backup systems in place, um, I just think it, there's, there's, there's some first world examples and, and I think it comes through in the results in our comparison in South Africa with regards to sort of in line with European standards. I think from a broader Africa perspective, it's probably a, a, a growing um, sort of agenda point. Um, I think in it's, it's sort of a mix, mix spread of, in some instances, very little existing, in other instances, and typically I think South Africa there is, is leading the process, certainly from a Southern Africa point of view. But he says the recession was a wake-up call. During the good times, I think companies built up stock levels and didn't necessarily pay enough attention to demand planning, forecasting, sales and operation planning type practices. Certainly the recession was a wake up call that you know these are key core business processes that, that need to, to be in place. Um, also the way that we structure our supply chains and our networks. Do we necessarily need to carry stock across the, the whole supply chain or can we apply a, a more prudent approach by carrying stock in fewer locations? Uh, can we apply a, typically a, a more responsive approach towards serving the, the regional areas such as Bloemfontein, the Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, which is typically a, a more expensive distribution area to, to service. Earlier this year, a trucker's strike in South Africa turned very hostile. Protesters took to the streets angrily, even using violence against truckers who were not participating in the strike action. Those who did not have a risk management plan in place saw their business being shut down for a week, suffering a significant loss. South Africa, the risk survey has certainly identified labor uh, unrest as a significantly higher risk, two and a half times higher risk than uh, other parts of the world. It's one of the sort of things that stand out about the survey. Um, 
you need to respect the, the right of employees to voice their dissatisfaction. I think one needs to recognize that. Um, I think it's also a highlight that in terms of labor laws and you know the flexibility that, that labor has in terms of voicing their opinion, certainly it perhaps need to be a discussion point between business and, and government. Swanepoel says businesses must put strategies in place to mitigate risk. The strategies, for example, could be do we just buy insurance to mitigate these risks? Do we identify incidents and look for improvements that we can make? Do we simulate different risks before, beforehand and take a proactive approach and, uh, and then use that information to lessen the degree to which those risks occur? So those are the sort of things that we could use and the survey identified those within South Africa and compare that to the rest of the world as well. If you look at the strategies that are in place uh, to deal with risk, we found that there's a disconnect between supplier, uh, our, how we work with our suppliers and how we work with our customers with regards to supply chain risk management. And in the, in the rest of the world, we very closely align in terms of how we work with our customers, but we fall short in terms of how, how closely we work with our suppliers. And we can also identify that the top two risks, uh, risk factors, were a raw material supplier failure and a finished goods, goods manufacturing failure. Those are related, in my, in my opinion, to suppliers. So we therefore, if we had perhaps managed the supplier relationship better in terms of risk, we maybe could have prevented some of that. Supply chains are becoming more and more vulnerable as a result of globalization. Without creating economically viable uh, infrastructure in, in Africa, our road network, our ability to get product to market and from source to, to export market is, is, I think, remains a key risk, but also a key opportunity. Uh, a, a key risk is, is around people. So uh, I think for me, it is refreshing to see some parts of Africa really maturing, where you're seeing stability coming through more and more. I think traditionally, we there was a perception about um, Africa not being a great place to do business. With globalization, uh, it's, it's our time and we, and we need to capture that. And we need people, we need skills and companies investing in, in people, uh, closing the gap between schools and tertiary institutions and between tertiary institutions and business and within business. I think that supply chain risk management is something that has been kind of overlooked in the past from a, from a logistics and supply chain perspective. It, it fell more within the financial side of the business. I think that people are starting to see the benefit of working closely with supply chain and channel partners to reduce risk for a supply chain as a whole and not just for a specific company. So I think that in the future we will see more of that and we'll see maybe a risk department falling more within the scope of supply chain um, than finance or, or maybe a bit of both. So I think that could be the future. Swanepoel and Deswat have no doubt that Africa's supply chain industry is set to grow enormously as long as the continent thinks smartly and plans ahead.